Hello, hello. Welcome back to Channel Top Gaming. This is Aaron. We're going to do another ranked draft in Corset 2020 on Magic Arena. Let's get in there. So we've done a, a good amount of these now. We slipped in some War of the Spark drafts, but there's a good handle on the different archetypes in Corset 2020 now. I tend to gravitate either towards like a red black or red blue, depending on the cards I see, aggro -y style. With, of course, Heart Piercer Bow being the darling of the set. Uh, or I end up in something you've probably seen quite a bit of, some version of Teamer Elementals. I know there's a blue white uh, flyers deck, and I'm sure there's a couple other different archetypes. I know we played a black white life gain kind of deck when we opened up pick one, pack one to Johnny um, Mythic Planeswalker. But overall, it's it's fairly settled to a couple archetypes, like most limited formats get to. Uh, well, let's see, for our pick one, pack one, this is um, pretty slim pickings. Uh, brought back is a pretty decent, I've played around with it and constructed, but it's not a very good limited card. It takes a lot of setup. Herald of the Sun is excellent. Can be a reason to go into blue white flyers. Um, you definitely need... A little bit more time to get to it. It is six for a four four. If you have that mana though, you're generally putting counters on and can finish out the game. Definitely a finisher and still vulnerable. I've played against these before and had uh, opponents slam it thinking they've stabilized and then I just have a removal spell and continue on with the aggro plan. Other than that, the rest of these are pretty abysmal. Um, Sanitarian Skeleton is great. It's a top pick out of the commons. It honestly is rivaling anything else we have in this pack. Lavakin Brawler, sort of the same. It goes uh, as a key piece in the Elementals deck. Skeleton just goes great with any sort of the Black Sacrifice effects. And to be honest, this is such a weak pack. I'm not that impressed. If this was the um, Flying Lord, the Spirit Bird that gives plus one, plus one to all flying, then I would be much more likely to pick that. Other than that, all of the rest of these are super weak, so we're just going to kind of go back to our, our bread and butter. Skeleton goes in a lot of different decks, and black is arguably the best color in the set. Um, well, continuing with the weak packs, Stormkin is pretty good. It goes definitely in Teamer. It's a gold card, so we would have to commit to two different colors from the first pick. Not that big a deal. Uh, if the power level was there, I don't know if it is to justify that. Uh, since we do have a couple other pretty good picks. Chandra's Outrage is probably going to be our pick. Um, it's premium removal right behind Murder and some of the other smaller effect uh, spells. If there was absolutely nothing, then we might come back to Skeleton back around again. Boneclad Necromancer has a place. It's not, I've come down on it a bit since the Exile effect is pretty pertinent because if you're playing this in a black deck and you haven't manage to make enough creatures die, rather, if you haven't killed enough of your opponent's creatures, then you might have to exile something out of your own graveyard, which usually you're in a recursive sort of deck if you're in black here. So in limited amounts, um, can be fine in just about any deck, but you want to watch it and sort of balance it so you don't end up nomboing yourself. Octoprofit's playable, Pup's playable, Crasher's playable, and, you know, the dual land. But out of this pack for us, right here, right now, uh, I think we're just going to go with the Outrage and see where it takes us. A couple pretty underwhelming picks to start out. All right, well, we did just slot into a great card for this archetype for the colors we're already drafting. Siegebreaker has the Destroy Target that was dealt damage effect on tap. Or excuse me, on demand, not on tap, but on demand with no taps necessary where you can just activate this at instant speed. So it's great synergies with Heart Piercer Bow, um, any sort of that black or red aggro cards that I've been talking about. Um, the Thief, the 2-2 two -two that you get to draw a card and you lose a life. Can This can be a follow-up or just even a threat of activation. Um, and then honestly, the 2-1 First Strike Flyer for four, which is a pretty lackluster card that I almost never end up playing can go really well if you end up with blade brands uh, and then siege breaker ogres anything that you can turn that first strike damage into a kill effect or destroy effect 
before the normal phase of damage goes through can be all right i haven't played too much with it but i've seen it for sure anything else in this pack is generally white eternal isolation's fine it's better in a best of three where you can bring it out of a sideboard when you know for sure you're gonna have targets um other than that sometimes it can just rot in your hand and sometimes you really want it more at instant speed which it can't be so it's definitely it's a playable probably makes a main deck if you're short on removal and best of one um, but definitely a great sideboard for, card for best of three aerial salt is just the white removal card decent enough you're definitely playing them if you're in uh, white white's a, a harder color to draft without seeing some clear signs or powerful cards off the bat though it is generally accepted as the weakest color in this particular set um, though again dining angel is a playable in that deck if we had gone that direction um let's see other than that not much else in this pack uh so we'll just take our on point excellent card in our colors and keep going season of growth is definitely just continually risen in popularity and for good reason it's very powerful and, and it has synergies with a lot of different uh, either target your own spells or just recursive um, spells that you can get in this set we aren't really looking to move into green or even splash that way um, and here we go here's a good pick for us gorging vulture it still gives me the heebie-jeebies a bit whenever you play one of these self-milling cards in a limited format like this because if you have any soul salvages you can accidentally eat those up or you can just get all of your recursive cards on the mill which then just leaves you stuck that said flying is a premium and especially a two two for three uh, we'll definitely play it and if on the other side of that coin we end up recursive but just mill creatures we get life and then we can recur those creatures back out inferior eight i'll play if i'm short on blade brands in an aggressive deck like this um, and it also goes with season growth say in like a teamer elemental style leak can druid is one of the better if not just best commons for green and is just a good card helps ramp blocks early does all the things you want it to do um and that's a boot it uh i guess creeping trailblazer it really seems like this card should be really powerful and it does fine in an elementals uh deck but it is also just not necessary in any sort of elementals deck that you can put together it's not a key piece it's not a foundation piece but if you're already there it's definitely worth picking up um but it's just very very corner case uh, all right noxious grasp is again one of the best of three cards that are just phenomenal best of one it's a little dicier but of all of the um, color hosing cards the cycle in this set that destroy different or just do different things against protection of uh, color hate this is probably the one that you can main board with confidence even in best of one um, so definitely probably our lead pick this is interesting. Goblin Ringleader picked up early enough. We can prioritize. We definitely have, oh, at least three or four different goblins um, that we wouldn't mind having type-wise. Or at least two to three with Goblin Ringleader maybe being the fourth if we we're going goblins. Um, except for Ember Cat can go in the stack. There's also um, certain elementals. The four drop that gives you three one ones at haste um, definitely goes in a deck like the one that looks like we're sort of building which is that recursive grindy uh, aggressive sort of deck and I, I just said aggressive and grindy but you grind out the value from the graveyard but you're still constantly aggressive and forcing your opponents to either trade out right for your different creatures or punishing them with things like siege breaker or the cutthroat which i'm sure we usually see a good good number of near the end of the draft so this has a certain amount of upside it's a two drop it's playable we're not starved it's still early in the draft we don't need to pick it up just for two drops sake and with such limited upside in the deck that it looks like we're going to be in i'm moving towards noxious grasp even over ringleader which is tempting but could easily just be a flame out card, especially in our four drop slot. Then we, you know, we'll miss this noxious noxious grasp more than we'll miss a ringleader uh, or even an ember cat. So, all right. 
So in this pack, uh, I haven't seen Colossus Hammer brought to bear successfully, though I've seen some attempts. Sure, sometimes you'll win a game if you get it out, but it just means that you probably could have won it earlier with a different card if you'd played that in your deck instead, or just not lost if it rots in your hand, or on the battlefield. Uh, we've talked about most of these white cards. Blade Brand is in contention. It goes with things with our skeleton, um, the other creatures we're looking to pick up, like Blood Burglar, or any of those two drops, Audacious Thief, anything that we're looking to attack in anyway and then trade out for value in some way. Um, Blade Brand plays really well with that. The only other real consideration for our deck is the Destructive Digger. It's one of the goblins I was talking about. Um, if we end up somehow with sort of a goblin sub-theme with the Ringleader, um, not terribly exciting. has a little bit of synergy with the Retributive Wand which is just a one dinker that if you sacrifice it, or rather if it's destroyed or leaves the battlefield, you can do five damage. So you can use this to sacrifice it. Um, and it can eat lands late in the game if you're just trying to dig for cards. Doesn't block too well, attacks okay, um, would be fine. We'll play one of the deck. Mm, but I don't know if we want it over, say, our first blade brand, which we almost always want in a deck of this type. Hmm. It comes down to what do we think we'll miss more, and I think I'll miss Blade Brands. Even if we end up with more than enough, we always want at least the one, if not two or three. And this gives us an interesting pick. So first off, never play Thought Distortion. We'll just leave it at that, uh, at least in Limited, and probably even in Constructed. What we're really looking at is the Spone Splinters, the Bow, and the Axe. And even though the Axe does go in a deck like this, it makes all your smaller creatures that you're trying to recur anyway, skeletons that recur on their own, uh, trade up or just get in more damage while we're waiting, um, Vulture in the air, etc. The Heart Piercer Bow and Splinters have more immediate impact and are definitely more powerful. Splinters is probably what we're going to pick. It's just too good to pass up. Especially in a deck where we're already in black, we're probably looking for any sort of recursive value and we already have one skeleton. Um, it just is too much power. The only um, thing that would be holding us back is if we we want two to four Heart Piercer Bows in this deck, even if we don't play blue with the tutor ability from the Weaponsmith. Um, just because it's that good and with things like Siegebreaker, and like I said, it will probably pick up hopefully at least one if not two Cutthroats, that just makes the bow that much better. But that said, I don't think we can pass up this Bone Splinters. It's really tough. The decision to pass the bow now is going to be really a hard pill to swallow if we see only one more bow that we pick up later, which will still play the single bow, but two bows is four times better than a single bow, three bows, say twice as good as two bows, and then the fourth bow is just probably starting to rank at a, a normal amount of okay, gives you a lot of recursive value, or uh, excuse me, multiplicative value. So after that long speech, let's go ahead and take our splinters and hope it all works out. All right, nothing for us in this pack. Uh, we'll just take the uncommon for vault value kind of the same here uh, I will take the prismite on the off 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 chance we need to play it kind of the same with the salvager of ruin we're not getting any love on the back end of our packs um, actually ruin just isn't good enough and there's an outside chance I've played one rage before in a deck where we had a lot of blood burglars and things that we just didn't mind uh, always attacking uh, all right, we'll pick up the Infuriate, even though I'm not that excited. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind airstrikes, but they need to come out of the sideboard. Well, we wield the ling ring leader, so we'll see if that means we end up uh, picking up some goblins on our way. All right, pack two. <clears throat> Mystic Forge is a great card in constructed. I haven't seen a way to make this good enough to justify playing it in limited. Um, so not really consideration here. Apostle of Purifying Light. 
this thing hosed us real hard uh, in the draft we did right before this um, yesterday. Uh, just because, like I said, we play a lot of black. Black is the best color in this set, in my opinion. And this just stonewalled us. We couldn't get around it. It gave the opponent enough time to build their own board out. And then we were just, we were done. All because of this one little 2-1 uh, um, protection from black. Uh, in that game, we also didn't pull any of our bows, which I'm sure we had at least one of in that deck, which would have taken care of it. But all the same, it, it just completely stonewalled us. Scampering Scorcher was the card I was speaking of earlier. This produces... This is good in Elemental's deck for Enter the Battlefield triggers and just general damage out of nowhere, different pump effects that you can have for Elementals in that deck. Um, but it also goes really well in our deck and is likely our pick out of this pack. We get fodder to sacrifice if we need to to things like the Bone Splinters. We get to go wide and then swing in, which sometimes we'll have effects for. But also if opponent dinks off just one of our... Um, elementals as a block then we can always blade brand or clean up with siege breaker just has a lot of good combos for us and synergies scuttlebutt is good in certain decks it's handy of course ramping and color fixing if you're looking to splash colors uh, just as it's basic but the second ability which i don't think gets used enough or enough attention can be ways to get around certain cards that hose like our noxious grasp or the creature that we just saw a second ago, the uh, Spirit, the 2-1 Protection from Black. It can mess with the colors of your creatures or their creatures, depending on how you'd like to manipulate it, and can make some of those cards work better or save you from those cards on the other side of the board. Um, we're definitely interested in a Cutthroat. Hopefully it wheels or we see another one. And that's about it in this pack. Another fairly weak pack overall. All right. Blood Soaked Altar, I tried to make work early on, and I think a lot of people did, because it's a pretty powerful effect if you can minimize the impact of the price to pay. So the life is just life. Generally speaking, hopefully two life isn't too big of a deal for you. Discarding a card can you can get around as well as the sacrifice creature effect by having enough sanitarian skeletons, uh, and then it just sets up an engine, uh, or just general recursive effects for discarding, say... A creature or even a land and then sacrificing a creature that you can get back with a recursive effect but it just never seemed to come together um you would run out of resources before you could bring the five fives to to bear or you would go through the process and then there's just plenty of good removal and that five five would get blown up and you would have spent a lot of resources uh in the in the meantime mask of immolation uh i've actually liked more and more i haven't had as many opportunities to play it as i did actually now that i'm looking at it we're going to end up drafting a very similar deck to the other two uh draft videos that we've done already in this black red i promise you i do definitely lean towards it as i'm drafting through but we play a lot of different other decks so apologize if this seems like we just keep playing the same deck but that's just the way it goes sometimes we cannot control the cards but mask of immolation i've only played in one other deck which was um a draft that you got to see and i was impressed with it i like it because like i said in that video as well if you need that one little dink of damage to finish off a creature or to trigger something for siege breaker or for a cutthroat um you got it you also have i like these new equipment styles where you get a little creature of some sort that immediately becomes attached to so you sort of get a little bit more upside since sometimes equipment can stagnate if you're not able to get it onto a creature because you need your mana for other things. Hopefully we need to pick up a soul salvage still. We can get that and then use this to again just recur. Uh, and that said actually soul salvage is a consideration along with this bone splinters and of course we'll pick up another blade brand hopefully somewhere. But between bone splinters, soul salvage and mask of emulation we actually need to take a little peek here. And so far we got a couple of creatures. We hope not to play this Prismite. We still need some early small creatures. This ringleader is contingent upon more zo uh, goblins coming our way. But as it stands, hmm. I guess since we still need some early creatures and just earlier plays, this Mask of Emulation can 
be useful enough to push out getting another bone splinters or even our soul salvage which i really would like to pick up that's probably the one that's really in contention between mm, well some of our best better cards right now best cards are creatures so that really makes me lean back towards the soul salvage even though we need some earlier stuff to happen and I just gushed about the mask for a moment. I feel like I see less soul salvages than I did when we first started drafting this particular set. Um, and I've even missed a couple thinking I was going to pick it up on the late packs. So I'm really considering this here. Extra damage, kind of a little token creature can be used for bone splinters and then attach to anything else to be used as more fodder. Mm, I really want this soul salvage and I think I've just been burned a couple times in the last uh, week when I've been drafting thinking I'm going to see one and then I don't. So I'm going to take it now and hopefully we just don't get slapped in the face with a bunch of them now. All right so Scourger uh, it's just a little too much for what you get. It's a little too pricey. We have better ways to trigger this ability or rather destroy a creature rather um the fin lurker is in contention it's a small creature it's good early it's good late um veil of summer if you're in green by the way is great even in best of one it's so good that i'll i'll go ahead and main board it blade brand we've talked about skeleton would definitely take another one of if we get the opportunity undead servant can work in decks like this if you're sort of just shorter on four drops and you get at least three of them. It's not worth making a priority though. Um, definitely don't get trapped trying to make it work, but it's something to be aware of um, if you're in these colors. Mastiff is a little better at blocking, of course, out of the gate and getting some good damage in if we get more than one um, versus the Fin Lurker, which can, can miss, you know, if opponents doesn't have any creatures in hand. It can then, of course, pump itself if it's that late in the game. So sort of a toss-up, a little harder to cast as well. But that's about it for us out of here. I'm not saying we wouldn't play a Brawler, especially since we already have a Scorcher. But we're already kind of thicker in the four drops, and we need to look at these smaller creatures to make sure our curve is reasonable. Hmm. So between the Fin Lurker and the Mastiff, and here's the problem. If I knew we were going to pick up at least one more Mastiff, I'd probably just go ahead and slam this pick now. If we end up with just one, it's not bad. It's just not nearly as good. Whereas this Fin Lurker... Hmm. I'm going to say we need to make sure that we get our smaller creatures out and that they're able to trade at least with our opponent's two and three drops. Whereas the Fin Lurker, at best, can Threat of Activation attack on turn three and possibly trade if we want to spend all of our money. Mana. <laughs> and money. Our money mana. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Pack Mastiff. We also have seen these wheel later since the bots tend to not pick them up if they're not in black or even if they're splashing black since it is a double black card. Let's see how we do with that. Hmm. Sky Knight Vanguard. Usually we don't see these too late, but if none of the bots are in red-white, then uh, we'll see them. It's a good card if you're in those colors. Those colors are a little harder to pick out in this set. Hmm. Other than that, there isn't a whole lot in our colors. The split land is not unwelcome. Make sure that we can cast some of our trickier cards. Hopefully if we pick up a murder, knock on wood. Pretty weak pack though overall. Yeah, there's a pretty late rare. This is our free to play account, so it would be a consideration, except for I already see an audacious thief that we're likely taking. This doesn't really have a place in limited. It can get into your deck somehow if you just need some playables, like as a creature itself. Eventually it does pump itself, um, but generally not the greatest in limited. Audacious Thief, if you haven't heard me talk about it before, uh, it's excellent. 
you're replacing it as soon as it attacks and then usually it's in a deck archetype such as this where you have blade brands and oh, siege breakers uh cutthroats things like that to make them pay so that you've actually come up one in that exchange we already took our soul salvage so luckily we don't have to feel bad about taking the thief here and then sometimes uh, healer of glades will make it into elemental decks or even decks that have season of growth where you can put say a hardcover on this and then return both with say a portal to your hand and then just get a lot of uh, repetitive value by playing this getting life putting hardcover on it get season of growth draw a card rinse and repeat over and over especially in a later grindier format like this um, and then spider's just an all-around good card but we'll take our thief oh man these peaks these packs have been pretty thin and these peaks have also been pretty thin uh, at least for in our colors so mine rot's the only thing in our colors so we'll likely pick it up though we'll not likely play it it's not out of the question but i hope we have enough other playables for our archetype the best card in this pack is probably rabid bite um, just one of the premier removals you need if you're in green um, and say so you can't pick up any red a little more definitive and kills the creature than blues removal which is a uh, enchantment in this set um and that's about it try not to play on a holy indenture i mean we'll just put it as that far it looks very attractive but it's still way too susceptible to getting uh, blown out for a two for one not in your favor um so mine rot and hopefully we don't play it all right there's an excellent late bone splinters for us which will snap right up and really nothing else in this pack Oh, all right. Well, unfortunately, in the sense that we were going to get a soul salvage anyway, we uh, did pass up the earlier pick. But we'll still play two in this deck, and now we're just really looking, ooh, exactly, for a cutthroat. Not a hard pick, clear choice, and a welcome choice at that. Same for this blade brand. Didn't really need a third, but... It's possible we play it, not probable. Scorch Spitter is maybe what we're supposed to pick. It's an elemental, which means if we see a Lava Kin later that we want to play, it's adding towards our elemental count. Uh, it's also fodder for our Bone Splinters. It can wear a Heart Piercer Bow if we get there. And we already have two Blade Brands, and they seem to just kind of pop in late. It's just as likely we're at the end of pack three with nothing else to pick. And we pick another blade brand if we really want a third one. So on the outside chance that we want a one drop elemental, we'll pick that sucker up. Not looking great for the ringleader. Uh, these don't matter. Don't matter, but it's uncommon. Yay. Continuing to not matter and bomb. Ooh, and bomb. Oh, and we actually have a tough choice, though. I don't think it's still a choice. Knight of the Ebon Legion is too good to pass up, even if you're adjacent to black. It's even splashable, uh, especially in an aggro deck. If this goes unanswered, then, then it's going to win you the game. So we are going to pick it, I think, as long as I don't talk myself into getting this Gravedigger. Gravedigger in a deck like this is just exactly where we want to be. Um... It allows us to maybe even play just one soul salvage if we really want to, and then just gives us tons of recursive value. Soul salvaging, or even better yet, using a blood for bones to get a grave digger back, which then gets another creature back. And unless for some reason it was countered or discarded, it has already gotten you another creature back. You're already up three cards at the end of that cycle, maybe you know, more if we're really counting grave digger as a blocker or fodder for sacrifice. It is such a great engine for the deck like this and is a windmill slam for almost over anything else except for possibly this Knight of the Ebon Legion and a couple other choice like Mythics or things. And I really don't think we can pass it up. Slamming this on the play in turn one in an aggressive deck is just where we want to be. Um, and it's just really sad that it's not likely this Gravedigger comes back to us, but... Here we are. I guess it's a pretty good problem to have, really. 
So back to normal picks. Um, likely still taking this thief with the mastiff being a sort of want to get that synergy going. Um, it's in consideration, but between that and a blood blur blood burglar and an audacious thief, the way our curve's going, and just for our recursive value, blade brands, etc. I just don't think we can pass up. We would play three or four thieves, to be honest, in this deck. Uh, there's definitely diminishing returns in the Noxious Grasp. You're doubling down on the fact that you need uh, green or white to be an opponent's deck. In this format, I think it's more likely you see, and it's better to say hose black than it is to hose green and white. But elementals are still a thing. Other large green, still a thing. White flyers are still a thing. It's definitely playable, but I think just as a one and a best of one, especially since we already have some bone splinters, some blade brands kind of take care of this outrage to cover our different um, bases. So that said, if we were in green, Wolf Rider Saddle is excellent. Uh, again, just these equipments that make a token creature that immediately equips to has made these equipment much more pickable. Uh, you're not getting punished by getting the equipment out and then needing to wait a turn probably to equip it and then the things that can happen in between that, possibly getting blown out by instant speed removal. It gets around all of these things by just making a, a token of some sort, attaching that, and now you have the benefit of the equipment that then still sticks around later. Or you can even move the equipment around immediately after playing one of these off of the token creature. So definitely worth a pickup if you're in green. For us, we have two things we're looking at, and I think it's going to come down to mana cost. So the Smuggler goes great in a couple different decks, one of them being ours because we can always sneak a Thief in if we don't have something like a Blade Brand up to trade or we just don't want to trade at all. Um, it's probably best, though, if you have a, a Lava Kin Brawler, which was the 2-4 that pumps for all the other elementals out since you can give it unblockable while it still has two power and then when it attacks it pumps up but it still remains unblockable um probably the clearest combo for that but that said i think we really need this blood burglar because we just need some two drops pretty bad we we have a handful now but we could easily use two more which this will be one of and we won't miss this this uh smuggler too much and we just didn't end up with enough goblins really for ringleader to be a thing but he can still hang out there for a moment all right well speaking of super value early drops vampire of the dire moon is good early uh it's, it's not blow your mind it's not say as good as a knight of the ebon legion but as it can just attack in once maybe even two or three times and get that extra little life that gives it an edge um and then if you pull it late, it's it can eat anything on the ground, any big creature. It's the ultimate uh, blocker for. So likely our pick, especially since I don't see anything else. Again, there's another smuggler. We've talked about it. We would play a third thief, though I think our need for earlier creatures is going to pull us back to the vampire. And that's about it. Woodland Champion, the token deck is out there with Ferocious Pup. And um, was it Raise the Alarm? I think there's a couple other token makers that can make this totally playable and worth it, but I've definitely seen it fall off in value. So if we look at our curve, we got plenty of things. We thankfully don't have to play this Mind Rot. Two Soul Salvages. And then some other good recursions, looking like a 16 land deck, or things to recur, rather, good ones. Um, that we're trying to go pretty lean early and then punish blocks with blade brands and infuriates even if we need it, though I don't think we do. I wouldn't mind another thief, and we will play it if we see another one, but I think that we value this early drop just a little too much especially since it is a good early drop and that brings us back man we are just drowning in thieves i think especially you start to get a lot more this is not um with spark harvest for more of the spark 
There's no alternative cost where if you just have enough mana, you can pay five. We have to sacrifice a creature, which we do have a skeleton for, and soul salvages, and things to make that recurring come back. But since we also have Siegebreaker and a Cutthroat and this Outrage and two Splinters already, etc., you can see my point that in the Blade Brands that we don't need to put ourselves out there and end up potentially just too many Bone Splitters, not enough creatures, or we used too many Bone Splinters and we don't have enough creatures to attack with. Blight Beetle is the protection from green color hoser creature in uh, this particular set. And it's playable out of a sideboard. It's playable in a main board, best of one, in a pinch. But we're not in that pinch, and it just doesn't have enough independent upside to uh, warrant playing. So we'll take our third Thief and be happy about it. Now we're, we're Thief Rich. It just accelerates the whole deck, really gets us to where we're, we're wanting to go. So now we have a little bit of a pick. Rapacious Dragon is fine. Um, if you're getting to the late game in red colors... It could be red blue or team elemental sometimes those two treasure tokens can allow you to cast a bigger spell bigger creature multiple spells the next turn give you a little three three flying action it can do some work in a duck deck like ours even though we would take a three three flyer to say probably finish off a game the benefit the create two treasure tokens generally doesn't come into play we don't care that much about having that much mana later um, if we're already getting to turn five hopefully we're about to close out the game and or we have inevitability in the sense of recursion. We've locked down the board with removal. So not as high a value to us, especially if we have something, say, like Goblin Smuggler, which we use to sneak in thieves or just sneak in that last bit of damage. Or it doesn't... Uh, it's, it's worth saying that it has haste. So just playing that and being able to attack into a clear board or a board where you're just going wide enough um, for an aggressive style is definitely worth it. The only thing that we're also looking at is a Keldon Raider. So four is looking to be our top out if we pull any big five or six traps that are worth it at the back end of this pack three, then we'll you know we'll pick it up and we'll play it. But right now we're looking at 16. I don't think I'm brave enough to go 15 lands, but maybe we'll see since we have three thieves, which is gonna be drawing us some cards. Um, along with this raider, that it's possible that it's worth it. Um, we discard. We don't mind discarding a creature if we need to, since we have two soul salvages. It is a little bigger and beefier, though I don't know if that matters as much as just being able to smuggle in a creature for damage or just get this out as a haster. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five which probably still makes it uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 creatures isn't a lot. So I know we're still talking about creatures, but I just want kind of want to get a count there. Most of them can be smuggled, and the haste is pertinent. I think it's enough to push us off this raider, though it is a close pick. Um, all right, so here's our raider we can just take now. Uh, wow, that is a super late overgrowth elemental. This is a cornerstone piece for the teamer deck that we've talked about a couple times. Teamer being red, blue, and green colors all in one deck. Um, it can even just, or blue, green, and I, I guess it, there could be a green, red elementals deck. I haven't seen one, uh, but it's possible to put that together if those are the cards you see. But in any deck that can play green and has elementals, this is a great one. This, uh, just does so many things for you. It puts a counter down usually when it comes down, so you're really getting 4-3 three for 3 mana. And then you can attack in willy-nilly for trades or trade off on um, defense that gives you life and grows it. So just all around, excellent, excellent card. Hawk box. I don't think that this is playable. I definitely know that there's been some streamers who've tried to break it. I have no idea, though. Um, and then we've talked about everything else. Don't need an infuriate in any way, shape, or form. We'll just grab our raider and be happy about it. No, no pick here for us. No pick here for us. We already have one prismite, which I don't think makes the cut. We have three one drops, two two drops, 
three thieves and two soul salvages. I think we're, we're just going lean and mean and trying to make it happen as fast as possible. And we even have a tectonic rift. We have two already. In case we want to do one of those, we'll look at it. We'll, we'll look at it and talk about it. Um, I don't think the digger does enough for us here. And the Mastiff definitely has synergy, so that just makes our, our first Mastiff so much better. Alright, well, another smuggler anyway. And um, no surprise, wow, so many smugglers. Well, we likely don't play all of these, but we'll definitely take it. Definitely didn't see the Gravedigger wheel, which is no surprise there. Um, high and tight aggro deck. We only need to cut two cards from. 16 creatures, that's much more along the lines of where I wanted us to be. And one of those cards will be a land. So we'll cut one red. Mm, or do we cut black? Seven, eight, eight, nine. Nah, we'll, we'll be fine. So we'll cut one mountain. And probably this infuriate. Maybe. Might be this noxious grasp, though, honestly. Let's see. If we take out the grasp, we have two splinters. Two blade brands, which very likely turn into some sort of lethal um, or removal spell. The Death Touch Vampire, which just bears in mind. Three thieves, one outrage. So one, two, three, four, five. Mm. Hmm. In the games, it's good. It is so good. It's just Doom Blade for whatever's going on, even to hits a Planeswalker, the life gains, whatever. And in games where it's no good, it is so bad, and we really don't have a way to loot it away, is the real problem. The only other thing we're looking at putting back in would be this Infuriate, though. But I think it's worth thinking through. Um, we can Infuriate a Knight of the Ebon Legion on turn two. And that gives it enough to pump itself. We can save or even um, swing in and save ourselves with a bunch of life. Or just save it if it's trading, which seems to be a cross, but we'll make sure that we keep ours. Swinging in has benefits. Kind of the same. I mean, it's it's in the same category as a Blade Brand in the sense that it gives our tiny creatures something to do. And instead of drawing a card, it generally is going to save us um, the card on, on board. I think I'm talking myself into it a little bit. Because it is flexible enough to do damage to the face, if that's how we want to do it. And it saves one of these smaller creatures. I think it's just uh, better in this deck than Noxious Grasp. Let's get in there and just see how disgusting we can be. Just really looking to be on the play and curve for three turns into irrepressible damage and card value just by ticking them up, ticking them off, ticking them all around. All right, keepable hand. Not amazingly keepable, but definitely keepable. One mana makes this an amazing hand. And opponent agrees. They also like black. So much so that that's all they're going to play. Okay, well, I was kidding, but here it is. All right. Super duper. I think I didn't say the duper before, but super duper would like a land off the top. You know, don't always get what you want. I guess we're going to blow them out with the Blood Burglar and take out both of their skeletons. Just seems to be the right play. And Infuriate coming through already. And this is a pretty strong play. I mean, we miss getting down our Mastiff, but we just gained five life and cleared two skeletons that the opponent can't even recur yet. Because they also missed the land drop. Oh, wow. All right, well, we won't, well, should we? 
cycle this blade brand for a mana. I think since we have a two drop, we'll go ahead and go along with it. And opponent's already screwed, so we'll just impact the board first and foremost. All right, opponent finds their second color and their third mana. Makes a nice little play, and we're still pretty stuck, which is unfortunate. We are going to trade off and blade brand for uh, try and cycle for land. Yep, yep, yep. Hopefully, come on land. Oh man, getting super punished. We didn't even go to 15 lands, we're just playing 16, but uh, two in the top 13, still statistically improbable. So come on land, there we go. It was inevitable. So we'll play our land, get in for our damage. And now our thieves should smooth out our draws from here on out. It should be pretty smooth sailing. As far as our draws, I don't know, game, there's still plenty of game to be played. I do like that opponent is pretty stuck as far as mana goes. It's going to give us a chance to get back up on board like we want to. Looks like uh, Bone Splinter's coming in for our Thief, though. Which is fine. we got another Thief waiting and two Soul Salvages in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're still getting our damage. Oh man, slowest mana ever. Alright, we will actually still just get our Thief down again. We haven't seen either of our Soul Salvages, and it makes me real nervous to play that Vulture first. But we've slowly, painfully drawn out of some thin mana. Oh, looks like opponent's got a little combo going. Trying to make use of those tokens. A little pattern matcher. Alright, so now we have all the mana. Hmm, so we can attack with Thief. Probably gets blocked by Matcher. Can't imagine it wouldn't be. Uh, I mean, and we'd attack with both in that scenario. And then play our Cutthroat, take on the Matcher. Alternatively, we can play the Siege Breaker. Attack with just the Mastiff. Actually, that would still require an activation if he blocks. I kind of just like the cutthroat plan. It's going to keep the board clearer than not. Yeah, let's see what opponent does. Plus, let's see what card we draw. Alright, Knight of the Ebon Legion. Which actually is great. We can get down the knight and play our cutthroat. So that is what we're going to do. Nope, nope. Let's not screw that up. Alright, opponent's down to 10. We're actually up to 28, thanks from earlier blood burgling. So we have a pretty commanding position, but opponent finally, I think, has a little leeway. No, they still didn't draw another mana. So if it's just a pup then we're not going to care that much. Oh, all right. Siphon's down. Knight of the Ebon Legion. But we've been able to push advantage this entire time, so we're just... We're just going to keep pushing. Yep. Get down some super fast scampers. And just get in for a buttload of damage. That seems like an odd plan. Yeah, they, they realize it too. No. Oops, it is. And good game for our opponent. Well, our deck ex did exactly what it was supposed to, uh, minus only having two mana in the top 13 cards. But after we got going, it just we spill out our entire hand, and we still didn't even have to recur anything, but we have plenty of recursion to pick up value on. So we do what we're supposed to do. Pretty lucky to have picked up even the one rare that fit into our deck, the Knight of the Ebon Legion. But as you can see, this is really, uh, you can have just uncommons and below and do just fine. Mm, okay. We have three mana, two colors, and a creature. So even though we have both soul salvages, which mm, is an ideal in an opening hand, we're still going to keep. 
Oh man. Alright, everybody's on the same plan nowadays. So another black deck, which we have an alright start against. Black blue this time. Already better than the last be deck that we saw. Trapless Sprite's really nice, especially if you abuse things like hardcover. Alright, well, for having 16 lands in the deck, all of a sudden now we're flooding. We got the, the opposite problem of last game. So black-blue, I think, is uh, definitely a more powerful matchup color pairing than, say, the black-green we saw in the last deck, which is still an alright, perfectly reasonable deck you build. But for black-blue, okay, well, opponent hurt us and decided, hey, we'll show that we have full salt eye. Um, I think I have an idea of what our player, or our opponent, rather, might be playing. Probably has Seasons of Growth, Blade Brands, Hard Covers, because Hard Cover goes well with both of these, especially if you have a portal. You can start bouncing for recursive value. We just hope uh, opponent tried to do too much, maybe, and it, it uh, backfires a bit on him. Well, speaking of trying to do too much, we have a ridiculous hand. It's just very silly. We could bone splinters <laughs> the sprite, which we might have to next turn if we have nothing else to do, and then wait for something better. It's just a lot of wasted value, unfortunately. And that's the downside. Uh, if we had mulligan at first, like, it was a viable option. But with three lands and plenty of time to draw, it seemed like we should have been able to draw a little more action. But as it stands, we're losing the race. All right, well, that helps a bit. So what we can do is Thread of Activation, the Mastiff. Which, if they block, we maybe still just let happen. Kill the her healer of the Glade, and then maybe put down the Vampire and Bone Splinters, the Sprite. Uses a lot of our resources, but then it gives us an opportunity to use our one of our two Soul Salvages in hand more efficiently. So we're going to attack... And if they don't attack back, then that's fine. We put down the Vampire. Call it a day. Alright, so we pump. And yeah, we'll still have... Actually, no, wait. We don't pump. Unless we're going to pump twice. Which I don't think has as much value. We want to get that Flyer off. He can bring the Skeleton back anyway. Um, plus, we're trying to use our Soul Salvage. So we're just going to let that happen as is. Player Vampire, Player Bone Splinters, and next turn we can Soul Salvage. Like I said, it seemed fairly inefficient, but we need to use the cards, the mana that we have, to use the cards that we have in hand. And, well, see, the opponent knows. Knows the value of a good Soul Salvage. All right. Vulture's good. It gives us a blocker. And we're going to be able to see... A couple more cards off the top. Alright, plenty of good value there. Plenty of good targets, too. So we'll wait and see if he wants to trade up. And now we're in business. We can either bring back both Mastiffs. Which actually seems better than even a Scorcher... Or a smuggler. So depending if we draw mana or not, will depend on what we grab at first. Yeah, we'll trade. Trade all day. Sure thing. You got it, bud. Alright. Good to know. So we can grab Mastiff, Vulture, play Mastiff, play Vulture next turn, see what we get, and maybe get back other Mastiff and something else. 
play Vampire, except for we're just not blocking big threats at the moment. So I'm just not that excited. So let's go ahead, do Vulture Mastiff, play Mastiff, pass turn. We're hoping to get, man, that's a lot of life. I don't think there's any way that opponent doesn't have portals in their deck. With all the healer of the glades. Card covers. Alright, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and do Vulture. Still gives us a full soul salvage. Okay. Well, we're going to want to soul salvage some of those back, please. Um, yep, I think we just grabbed the Siege Breaker. And the Knight makes our Mastiff look a little sillier, but it is what it is. Grab two excellent cards. Pass turn. And now that's both of our soul salvages fairly early on, but opponent's out of cards. So we are pretty into it. Alright. Opponent realizes they probably need to turn up the volume and starts racing. They have a pretty healthy total at 30. So we have six mana. We're definitely going to get the Legion down, which means we have five, which could be a smuggler. Actually, no, I take that back. If we really wanted to, we could bone splinters of links, but I don't see any purpose in that since they have recursion. So I think it's just Siege Breaker, Knight, go. Before damage, take up a counter, have a nice day, and we're in a much better position to race for sure. I am not sure that any strategy should have two or what is that, three healer of the glades? I don't know. Seems a little suspect. So we have six, that's two activations if we want. One activation gets us up to five, six, two, three, four, five, so that's definitely attacking. We could smuggle something. We have Charnas Outrage. I think we swing with everything and figure it out here in a second. Because it really depends on how they block. We can hit something with Outrage at instant speed if we need to. Of course, we can pump and likely will pump the Knight. Okay. Alright, so bad news for opponent. It's going to be a pretty big blowout. And that's going to leave us with two other mana. So we can pump this once. Nope, we need all the red mana. Alright, is what it is. Doesn't matter. And end of turn. At this point, even though the life disparity... Oh, no. I was going to say, even with the life disparity, we got a pretty good lock on this game. And opponents seem to agree. All right. And gets us into gold. Yippity skippity. Eight days left in the season. Just in time. All right. Let's just keep the fun train of rolling. Now, there's a lot of different ways to short circuit uh, an aggro deck like ours. Um, a lot of them being, of course, just being able to match bigger creatures, also better recursion. Um, if we don't get our curve in the first beginning setup part of the game, then we can get overwhelmed pretty easily coming back the other way. Mm, this one's kind of sketch too. We really prefer to have one drops and two drops, but we're not going to turn away both colors, even if it is four lands. 
So, Knight Ebon Legion right here. Alright, we'll take Blood Burglar. And now we get to curve into our Siege Breaker. So, not bad, not bad at all. So, opponent could be doing two things. This, of course, goes into the Elemental deck. But there's also, I guess, an Elemental subclass B deck where if you can pick up Chandra's Phoenix, which if you do damage to opponent, non-combat damage, it pumps up the Phoenix. This is an excellent combo with. But it looks like they're actually more along the lines of our type of deck. It's possible they have a Blade Brand, but we're not, not going to attack into We'll take that play brand out of their hand for sure. Get down our thief. If they take the damage, great. All right. More than happy. Okay. Not entirely sure what opponent's up to. Possibly now he wants to blade brand the thief, but we're still on board for that plan. You're getting a little flooded. Can't imagine opponent doesn't have a trick. I think they're just trying to figure out if they want to use it now or not. What? All right. Oh, very interesting. Not entirely sure if it's a trick or if it's... Well, yeah, that just flashed right through. Hmm. Not sure. Can't really pick up on what's in the opponent's hand, just based on the stops. Alright, so this feels more like they kind of want to blade brand now, but we have no problem racing. Go right ahead. Alright, Undead Servant. So, we can swing in with our Burglar and Thief, Blade Brand, actually we don't even need Blade Brand if they drop, or if they block either. We swing in with the Siege Breaker though, I don't really want to trade that without a Soul Salvage already in hand, but that is 4 damage, they go down to 10, we get another card. Hmm, I don't think it's worth it. We're just going to send... Alright. Thief and Burglar trades off the Thief, no problem. And now we have a scary Gorging Vulture. Alright, do not hit our Soul Salvages. Don't do it! Don't, uh, oh, okay. It's a lot of creatures. Yep. But uh, that's also a lot of targets for our soul salvages. Alright, opponent's already working their under, undead servant angle. Uh, I've only done it in one deck. If you get at least three, generally you want four, and also you generally want to be in black blue so that things like Tonebound Lynch, uh, Lich, you can loot away the servants into the graveyard without having to play them again. But as opponent just demonstrated, as long as you have at least one in the graveyard, you know, five toughness and excuse me, five power and four toughness across two bodies for four mana is a reasonable card. Now we have an interesting decision. You can still only one for one or siege breaker. Even though I'd like to keep the ultra aggro plan going, we're going to pump the brakes a little bit. Without any soul salvages for sure in our hands, it gets a little sketch trying to uh, use our creatures so willy-nilly. Yeah, yep, we'll just pass turn. Now we do have mana up that we can use for our Siege Breaker, so if any damage occurs... Alright. 
So he's still trying to use that blade brand, I think. And I think we're okay. We're okay just taking it. We still don't want anything to get blade branded. We want all of our creatures as is right at this exact moment. And our life total is consider considerable, so two damage is nothing. There we go. And we sidestep the cutthroat. Oh man, I have to cycle one of these blade brands. Alright, so now we can swing in. The Mastiff we can pump at least once to trade with the cutthroat. Likely though, they just chump off with the token. Not super into that. They might even chump at the servant if they have another one in hand. Though I doubt they have another one in hand. I'm actually going to cycle this blade brand first. Yeah, let's cycle one of the blade brands. It's not ideal. Alright, well, I don't hate it. Same number of activations. Alright. Not ideal, but we're gonna keep on keeping on. What burglar? That's likely gonna come in at us so we can get that life. Alright. Skeleton, alright, well. There's still nothing exactly that we even want to take out with the splinters. We're just gonna win over the course of four turns in the air if nothing else happens. And if nothing still happens by the end of their turn, if they're not attacking in something we can blade brand the skeleton against, then we'll probably blade brand anyway just to cycle, see if we can hit a soul salvage. <clears throat> Grab some of these smaller creatures out of our deck. And yeah, looks like he's just unable to deal with the flyer. Man, flooding out with a 16 card deck feels bad. All right, here's part of how, why we like the smugglers so much. This will actually be lethal. So hit the Mastiff. Make sure. We tap our mana correctly. And if opponent has instant speed removal, then they have instant speed removal. There's nothing much we can do about it. Alright, looks like they might have a murder. Or an outrage. Okay. Not a problem. We can just smuggle in either... Uh, either creatures, but of course the burglar next turn, and that's lethal as well. He knows it, so he's singing, sending in the burglar on his side. I don't... We can actually splinter... Two blockers. But we can force a weird trade. Yeah, we're not going to... Uh, trade anything. We go up to six. Two cards in hand. One card in hand. Another mana for us. Ten of our sixteen mana. Uh, and no soul salvages. <laughs> Just two soul salvages in the last sixteen cards. Alright, well we don't have any looting effects, so there's no reason to hold on to this mountain. Do we want to kill anything is the question. I think we just smuggle the burglar in, the vulture. They're going to try and swing back. It's not going to be that big big of a deal for us. We can bone splinter the cutthroat. Then he still just blocks with the other servant. Doesn't seem worth it. 
Because we could Bone Splinters, sack the Skeleton, get the Skeleton back, and play it all back in one turn. We have so much mana now. But I still just don't see the upside. We need to save it in case we have something that we actually do need to uh, kill that's in our way. So, opponent has no answer, then we got it locked up. They do have an answer. They would actually need like a flame sweep or, I mean, double removal. I'm not entirely sure. I think they're trying to work it out, but unless they have the answer staring right in front of them, yeah, they just don't have an answer. And we're going to block the Siege Breaker this time around. Uh, interesting. Not sure... It makes me think they might have an answer, but we're still going to block out. Okay. And then... Get to blow up his cutthroat. Ah, we should have done it at the end of turn. We're still in combat phase. Because he could have a soul salvage, which means now he can get that back and kill our siege breaker. Not that it matters that much. Nope, doesn't look like it. Alright, so we did have a single answer. Okay. And we pull a knight. So. We can kill the servant, attack with the siege breaker, blocks, blocks. We still have blocks, blocks. So I think we're just still on the same plan. It's been a pretty slow, grindy plan, but it's a plan nonetheless. It's just safer. And same scenario, it's not worth killing any of his creatures with this bone splitting. And that's game. Alright, we slowed down there at the end and really had to trickle in the last 10 points of damage. But as you saw, as long as we just managed our resources and were really careful that we still got there. So it's not impossible to win a long game, but opponent also didn't have some of the big grindy bombs. Um, nothing that recurred any strong, powerful spells or creatures out of his deck, so, or graveyard. Smooth rolling for the Rakdos deck again, I promise. I did not try to force Rakdos. It is just a coincidence that so far our three Corset 2020 videos have been Rakdos colors. Um, it's a tight one, but we're going to keep it. Skeleton Blade Brand combo gives us an extra card up as well as a, a trade across that we can recur. And we're just going to hope for that third mana. And fourth mana. But honestly, uh, I'll, I'll make a point of <laughs> drafting any other deck besides black red colors for our next video, which will also be through next week we're still working on our other projects but uh it just so happened that you can't tell the draft what to give you and black red was just our best line oh draco malfoy he's already bming makes sense draco malfoy would be a roper for sure dirty dirty slytherin We'll 
pet kitty? Oh, yeah? You're gonna hiss at me, kitty? Alright, so... <laughs> Does the opponent have a shock? Or possibly a... Uh, the pump spell? Seems to be one or the other. Maybe it is a shock. Interesting. Uh, if we do not draw a third mana next turn, we'll go ahead and cycle this blade brand. Try to get to it. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. And mana. There you see. Magic's easy. Just gotta call your shots. So, we can get a decent setup. We'd still take a mana, but we'd also take any card that we cast, three mana or less. So we have a, a good amount of live draws for board improvement. Looks like opponent's got, yep, that shock. There it is. I'm gonna swing in with your little kitty cat. Sure. All right, not a bad tempo swing for opponent. Fortunately for them, we're gonna get in for some damage all the same. Noink. And that does set us up nicely for the cutthroat. It's going to appear like we're just mass mobbing. Um, but we'll have Blade Brain and Cutthroat up as options. Okay, that's fine. And I think we'll Cutthroat. Well, if we Blade Brain, we'll have three mana up. Hmm. Maybe we will Blade Brand. There's also a possibility that opponent doesn't block at all, in which case we can Bone Splinters. There it is. Alright, let's Blade Brand the Spider. Let's see. Nope, just more land. Eh, it's alright. I don't mind getting a drop. It's fine. Plus, he did kill the creature, not the token, which is interesting. Oh, wow. All right. Well, we're getting kind of hosed. Um, flooded, rather. So we can... Should we just attack first? Yeah, we'll attack first. It's probably going to let it through. What? Okay. Well, in an interesting twist, opponent decided to uh, block the 1-1. One, one. And that's why we attack with it. It's either going to be one damage or they're going to block with it and they blocked with it and we'll just go ahead and take this brawler out while we're here all right we're pretty out of resources and gas after starting with two mana we've uh, drawn five mana <laughs> so seven in the top uh, 13 is quite a bit especially in the 16 land deck but that's okay so far, not so bad. Oh man, I said that's okay, and I think I think they heard me. Now the magic gods are going to be vengeful. All right, outrage for us in our face, and replay the skeleton. And call it a day. Now we'll go ahead and put full control on just to make it look like maybe we have another blade brand. I don't get too caught up in the mind games in limited play. All right, I don't know if that worked or not. Wow, okay. Well, we're officially insanely flooded now. <laughs> Nine mana in the top 15 cards in a 16 land deck. 
is ridiculous. The good news is if we can uh, get past this and start drawing actual cards, then uh, we'll have all of the mana we need for all of the things. Throw up that full control again. I'm not sure if that's why he didn't attack last time or not. But hopefully we can make it look like we have a blade brand. No? Not sure if that's what's holding them back. There we go. Alright. Well, we don't have a blade brand, so no reason to hold up full control. And they throw down a... They have six mana. Okay. Gracious Hydra. Cool. That's going to be an 8-10. Eight, 8-9. Eight, Wonderful. And we finally get one of our aggro cards. Man, the flood is is real. And it may end up screwing us. But we're not out of it. But we need removal ASAP. And pretty specific removal. We need Blade Brand that we need to be able to use. Or our other Cutthroat, which we need to be able to use. Or the Siege Breaker. Our best cards probably are other Bone Splinters. This is where Noxious Grasp would clearly be uh, at a premium. So opponent might have um, like a Rabbit Bite that they're considering or not sure. Pretty sure they shouldn't have just tacked in like that though. Interesting. So we have... Wait, this has Trample, that's why. Duh, forgot about that. Yeah, we're not in nearly as good a position as I thought we were. So we can activate it twice. Make it a 7-8, which is just not enough. We activate it three times, that's ten, that still wouldn't be enough. We need four times. Twelve, three, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. Hmm. But activating three times can block that Hydra. Okay. So they tick up to tick up. Yeah, alright. Oh no, they tick down from mana. They're still not done. They have a Chandra's Outrage, Elemental, okay. No, no, misclicks, ah, uh, misclicks, what are you doing to me? Wow, all right, that misclick's gonna hurt. So I don't think we can attack now, since we have to spend money, spend mana to get the skeleton out and on. And we'll have one activation in a blade brand held up. Yep. Alright, well, so be it. Does this take black? Of course it does. Yeah, it doesn't feel good, but it is an option. do two to any creature so I can get the skeleton out of the way or I can force the pump on the legion early we may end up having to nope all right they go for mana oh god that's gonna be the ball game Well, fairly fought. We'll show them that that was a dead Hydra anyway. Oh man, and we got another mana. There's five lands left in our deck. There's 22 cards left. 
All right, so I can't blame it all on Flood. It was played fine, and Pono definitely had a nice, nice enough deck. Um, but the Flood definitely didn't help either. Let's get back in there, though. So in that case, uh, that's that's where our deck falls down. So of course, flooding and then running out of gas early, that's when we need to be punching them in the face. But then our creatures get outclassed so easily um, that any three or four drops are usually going to just eat any of ours. All right. Two, three, four. Looks good to me. Hmm, realize that we didn't fix our our land art. We'll have to do that after this next game. It's nothing more important than having the right art on your land cards. Alright, and it's got a thief. We have lots of thieves. Well, he's definitely not going to block, so we're going to hold back the Mastiff to trade. If he doesn't want to do that, then that's fine. We'll attack next turn. Okay. It's a thief party. Thief party. So it looks like we're in a mirror match of some sort. Which is perfectly fine with me. Let's see if he blocks. Nope, no block. Alright, we'll go ahead and slam the ogre. It's likely that it either gets taken out, you know, with any sort of removal, or trades to a blade brand or a cutthroat. Or just gives us a straight up two for one. Interesting. Like that's fine, I guess. Um go ahead and attack out first. I'll take a land drop. We have five. I guess three, four. Good enough. You know it's better than one audacious thief, guys. Two. Two audacious thieves. Or three. Master Splicer. Giving us the business. We don't care. Let's see, we can make this a 4-5, so we can block with both. I think that's okay. We already have our soul salvage, or one of them. Three doesn't matter. Yep, we're just swinging in. What you gonna do about it? Hmm? What you gonna do about it? Draw two cards, great value. Oh man, if we'd only had a second mountain instead. Alright, so if we activate five. No, nah, it puts a counter on, but I don't want to activate. I want to be able to play this cutthroat. So play down the cutthroat. Hold up a blade brand in case we need it. Turn. Yeah, Master Splice are a lot less intimidating with no golems around. Alright, so that's a sentry and a skelly. Alright, so far so good. Another bone splinters. Well, hmm. Kill that, it puts a counter on that. Oops, three. Now it trades with anything. Six, we can pump it twice. So if we trade the thief in for the sentry, we don't really care where it moves that counter. Cutthroat still fine to attack. Legion still fine to attack. Yep. We're just going to keep up the aggro and maybe soul salvage at the end. See how it plays out. Uh-oh. Well, that's a nice little infuriate. 
Might be able to save our thief, which would be just fine with me. And then get back Thief and Siegebreaker. Yeah, they realize that I can just double pump. Don't care about pumping that. Don't mind trading. We're not trading, but eating that. So let's keep a hold of our thief. Sure. And then should we vulture first? Or salvage first. I guess we should vulture first, huh? Alright, fair enough. Alright, very tasty. We'll take it. And, yep, pester. So, we're still a little choked on red. So, I'm holding back our outrage, but we also have. Okay, well, sometimes the value engine is too much. Some people get real frustrated. But that's just us. Audacious Thief doing what it do. So if we picked up that Gravedigger instead of our first Soul Salvage, I think we'd be even happier, even though it's another 4-drop, and we're pretty thick on 4-drops. Just the, the insane value from Gravedigger. <laughs> totally worth it, but really, one Soul Salvage, I don't know. It was a tough pick. Alright, this looks like a phenomenal starting hand for us. Now we won't necessarily trade with just any old 2-drop, but we will trade with that one. Wow, we are still going to go aggro though. So he blocks, we trade. Absolutely. He doesn't block. We go up a life, so it softens the blow for when he wants to swing back, if he wants to swing back. And we continue chugging along on our... Yep. Our curve. Wow. Okay. Well, now we're going to do something real special. Hmm. Kind of a boner. If they have shock, this could be a blowout. Oh man, if he's got shock, this is so bad. Is it worth it just to try and get a counter on it? I think it's probably smarter to just drop our thief. Maybe. Maybe it is better to get the Evan Legion down. I'm going to go for it. Uh, an Evan Legion with one... Oh, he's got the shock. Oh, maybe. Maybe not. Alright. Well, if he does have the shock, he's a genius, because now he gets to shock the knight. No? Okay. Not entirely sure what opponent had, but now I really like our board position. We cheated our Evan Legion in with a counter, essentially. So now we get to attack with everything. Yep. And we're we're doing it. We're doing the aggro plan. Any we're we're happy that he blocks any of them. We can pump the Ebon Legion, short of a trick. Absolutely. So he's got a gross cycle, I assume. Uncaged Fury, okay. And so we still get to trade. An opponent had to two for one themselves, and well, we don't mind having to get our Knight of Ebon Legion back later in the game. And we've used a lot of opponent's resources now. Unfortunately, we're lightly flooding again, which is not what you want to see. And we have to wait one more turn before we can make the Mastiff lethal against the Spider. But we'll keep dinking away. That's why this vampire is so good. It just forces this one little life uh, advantage for us every turn. Alright, so we'll be able to threaten Pastiff, Pack Mastiff, as a trade for Spider 2 this 
next turn and it looks like opponent's still looking for action absolutely get it in there so they have a okay just a follow-up i think he's trying to race realizes they're getting way behind wow and we're just flooding again three four five eight in the top 13. what are you doing deck all right well we're not gonna let that hold us back we started this race we're gonna finish it oh sweet baby jesus laying in the manger well we get to save our thief if we want and i think we want and it's a little sad that we didn't put our land down first or we could pump up the mastiff too because we're not going to be able to do anything else with it let's go ahead and just get rid of the creature keep our advantage online Yeah, missed a point, but we're still looking pretty good. Pumps down to one card. And there's a soul salvage right on time. Okay. So let's go ahead and attack first. Ugh, what is with our mana? And tell you the truth, I think we just let it go and replay. Because we need a, a target for Soul Salvage anyway. It's Vulture. Alright. Not too shabby. Soul Salvage back. Thief at Legion. Replay Legion and probably gonna see a scoop on the other side of the table. Nope, there's any dragon. Says I'm not done yet. Alright, I respect it. Fortunately, we are gonna have a pretty go wide strategy here. There he goes. Good game. Alright. Chugging along. I mean, you can see why I gravitate towards the archetype. It's good. It's a good, lean, tight way to play aggro. We don't even have any heart piercer bows in this deck, which would just make it that much better. But that does mean that we had room for extra recursion. Makes it a little more consistent as far as soul salvages and getting everything back. I gotta say, though, I think I still like blue black better, even though I just don't see it as much. It's a little harder because you have things like Tome Bad Lich and better things to recur later, like the, uh, the Keeper of Secrets or. Yep. Absolutely. One, two, three. Let's do it again. It seems like our starting hands on our man is so nice, but then we flood it out so hard twice now. See how much uh, work this vampire gets in this time. Alright. We still prefer to trade either of those creatures uh, to an audacious thief. So we'll go ahead and still swing in with both. Sure. We're we're happy either way. <laughs> the opponent's not sure. Not sure what to do. Alright, there he goes. That's not the best trade, but I didn't want to pass up damage as well as clearing out another card that Audacious Thief would run into. Looks like we might end up blade branding anyway. Go ahead and swing. Opponent is nickel and diming us. This is not exactly how we want it to go as far as our trades. Yep. He's into it. Put blade brand or another card. Yes, that's what I like to see. Now we get to double spell. But now we're also out of gas. So we used 
most of our tricks just to keep the board clear for our turn five. We are able to pump the Ebon Legion at least once, so it should be able to attack in. All right. All right. So Mastiff Sanambo, Legion can become big enough to eat the Brontodon or it will get its own counter. I don't think it's worth swinging with everything though. I don't want to really trade off the Mastiff for the Skeleton right now. Like we could fake out a Blade Brand if we really wanted, but if our bluff gets called then I don't think it's worth the upside just for an extra damage. We do get to pump and still play the Burglar though, which is nice. Yes, please. Oh, don't have that shock. Oh, for just a second I thought maybe we missed a shock on the uh, upkeep stops. Alright, looking pretty sexy. Knight of the Ebon Legion doing its thing. We would still love any action off the top. I guess except for Shanja's Outrage, but we would still take that over land. So Thrashing Brontodon in this uh, particular format is still good. It's a good card. You're going to play it in any green deck if you can get a hold of it. But there's just not as many targets for blowouts. Oh, they're... it's funny how people always think that maybe they should be the aggressors. So he could have an Infuriate, uh, in which case I guess he can have a Mastiff. So we take five, six, we have a Blood Burglar on board. Yeah, we're just going to block with just the Skeleton. And if he wants to Infuriate the Skeleton, then he's more than happy, or more than welcome to. We're more than happy, he's more than welcome. Yeah, I thought about it and really just realized he didn't want to do any of that. So our backswing is going to be pretty brutal. Is it worth throwing the skeleton in? So we can do a maximum of 3, uh, 8, 10, 11. Oh, we actually have Xaxes? Unless they have a shock. So we're going to do that. they do have the shock, they get to live one more turn, but that's it. Do we, do we get you? Do we exact these? Yeah. Math, man. Crazy thing. I guess you should have infuriated the token. All right. Sometimes it's easy as that. Uh, combat math is tricky and I'm not trying to sound pedantic like I'm not. Uh, it's really, it's a hard thing to understand, but it is tricky. And thinking about the backswing and how much I could pump and do damage on the backswing um, didn't enter in. He just figured I'd block out and he'd be able to infuriate, which I just assume is what he had. Um, let's see if we can round it off. Solid seven. Seven and one. Seems to be what I go with with this type of deck a lot. Seven and one. Not seven and two. Not seven and oh. Seven and one. Alright, so this is our first clunky hand. Uh, we've had some with too much land and some with too little, but this is our first solo color land. But we have a 2 and a 3 drop in those colors, so we will keep... Cross our fingers. And if we do get a black mana, then it's an acceptable hand. It's still nothing terribly special off the bat. You know, good old Skeleton Blade brand is fine. 2 drop, 3 drop, fine. Oh, we still forgot to update our art. Oh, woe is us. Didn't put our special art out. Well, as weird as it is, we're going to mono red aggro our opponent for the first three turns. Maybe even four. And it looks like they're setting up a... Uh, uh, not really sure what Bant. 
does. I guess it's probably a blue white flyers with a splash of green or something. Um, I guess Brian. What do they call it? Brian something cutthroat. It's probably gonna pop out here and trade with the smuggler, I imagine. But you know, we got more smugglers. Oh, all right. Raise the alarm. Okay. So this could be a token build. Like I said, that one green two two for two that gets counters every time tokens come into play is very viable. Um, ferocious pup is also probably going to be in there. I'm trying to think of any big payoffs. I don't know. I don't know. But this is for the seventh win, so ostensibly we should be matched against somebody with a similar record. So even if they aren't, you know, going for their seventh win. They've won with this deck a good bit. So far, looks pretty good. Just not familiar with it. Wow. Sailor into winged words. I like it. Well, we have the most bizarre draw this deck could possibly have. Pretty sure this is all... Maybe not all. I forgot this is a different deck. Um, almost all of our red. I think there's seven red cards, maybe. Maybe there's more. Maybe there's like eight or nine. But three red mana and just all of our red cards. We still need a fourth mana. It could be black. That would that would be fine. I would take a swamp. Not sure opponent shouldn't chump yet, I don't think. They're not trading, so they're not saving future damage. All they're doing is cutting off maybe future upside of the sailor. Not really sure what they'd be thinking about. Possibly they're frustrated, they're playing what looks to be mono red aggro and uh, limited. That, that might be frustrating. If we can grab, if it ends up being another mountain, then I guess we Kelden Raider away the blade brand. But if we can get at least the Sanitarian Skeleton in, I'll be pretty happy. Well, you hope. You hope this isn't somebody just roping out of saltiness, because that'd be a pretty weird thing to be salty on. We haven't really done that much, and they've had some nice plays, so you assume this is probably a disconnect. Um, since I can see their rope still burning, uh, I'm going to assume that we're still connected correctly, and they're just disconnected, unfortunately. That seems more likely than a rope, just to be, to be honest. Oh man, not like this. Not like this arena. I like wins. I like wins even if maybe an opponent punted. It's still part of the game, but uh, just winning through somebody else's disconnect, especially for your seventh win, is kind of dirty because it means that it might have been there for their seventh win. It's definitely one of their later games. Oh no. Poor opponent. Oh, ew. Saw a little flash. There we go. Nice. What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? Alright, so I don't think he lost much, to, to be honest. Oh, okay. Full-on aerial assault. Gets a life back. Not so... Not so bad. Alright. I think uh, I'm going to take board presence. Even though I said probably slam the skeleton. I think I'd prefer board presence right now. So, cycle the blade brand the hard way. That's fine. Probably Vulture next turn. It's going to mess up their air plan. Plus just another creature. You get a little nervous about milling out those soul salvages, but got to do what we got to do. Did what we had to do. Mm, kind of wish we had a Blade Brand back now. Oh man, what is, what is this draw? So we can attack in and trade, if that's what opponent wants to do, and I don't hate that. Uh, I would absolutely outrage if it was possible, but the elemental's whole deal is that it costs two more mana to kill him. Or it, rather. I don't hate... Maybe we just offer up the raider and hold back the vulture. But to be honest, if it does take a whole turn, I think we're still okay with that. But let's play our red mana so we still can play the skeleton if necessary. 
Wow. Okay. Um, so now we vulture, I guess. Yeah. I guess we just vulture. But oh, uh, but that does mean we can do this. A little extra damage. A little extra vulture. And we're set up pretty good. Ah, still, you didn't get both of them. Still got one of them. And our swamp. Though, to be honest, at this point, I think it's enough mana, even though it's very awkward with just one swamp. An additional one does let us Chandra's Outrage the Elemental, though that's suboptimal play at best. Now opponent's just worrying about dying, which is a very valid concern. Hmm. If they pass with a bunch of mana open, I'm not going to feel great about it. I can see Convolutes being played in this type of deck. Looks like it's like blue-white flyers splash green for something. Oh man, okay, well. Hmm. Yeah, if they got Convolute, they got Convolute. We need to uh, go ahead and press our attack. Again, not super psyched. I think we want this trade to happen. I'm a little concerned that he's going to have an unsummon. So I think I'm just going to hold up the outrage. Maybe not even play the skeleton, to be honest. I don't know. Let's see what happens. We're going to let it go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Damage as is. All right. So there's the trick, which does allow us to save our raider, unless they have a another trick. I'm not sure what it would be. They have a lot of colors available to them. Is it a growth cycle? It's an odd deck. It's hard to anticipate what he's got here. Inspired charge was unexpected for sure. Oh, and anticipate. All right. So we get to get rid of the elemental, save our raider. We are going to lose the vulture, but that's not the biggest deal. And that still might be game. There's still plenty of cards and still a lot of options for opponent. Or at least as far as potential plays. But if they don't have a way to deal with our creatures on board, then that's two lethal threats. Hey, at least they didn't time out, right? I mean, I am interested. I wish sometimes you could share deck lists. Because honestly, this doesn't look bad by any stretch. I'm not sure what the green splashed for. Maybe they have uh... Go ahead and attack in. The Season of Growth? I can see that being good, especially if he's got like some God's Willings and stuff in there. But he needs two different ways to stop both our creatures. Alright, so there's one. And we pump. And we pump. And good game. Alright. Easy peasy. One, two, three Z. Another seven and one with a Rakdos aggro deck. Uh, again, I promise I will even if I need to record multiple uh, videos, we will have a different deck for our next video next week. Um at least elementals if not maybe some sort of off the wall different deck but it will not be just Rakdos black red aggro I promise you that but see our spoils spoils of war Bishop of Wings pretty useless that's fine though cards are cards and we like all of them you know for playing just free to play we haven't even done the store five dollar package because i just want to see how a pure free to play would play out we do great there might be a time we go ahead and do the five dollar gems maybe after we run out of the gems that we're procuring now but as you can see we're set up we keep turning five thousand gold into 
Well, so far, just as far as our videos on stream, they've been 950 gold several times. Uh, I guess we did, I think we had a, a five and three for maybe our first. Yeah, I think for our first draft. Um, but even at five, you're still getting, whoops, there we go, a lot of good value. Oh, let's go ahead and claim our prizes. There we go. There's the spoils. There's the spoils. I think we got an Iron Warlord last time too. This isn't the same video, I promise. With different voiceovers. <laughs> that would be hilarious though. Uh, but even for five wins, you know, you're, you're clearing 650 gems, the three packs you open to make the deck with, as well as at least one bonus pack with a one and three shot, essentially of getting a second one. So as long as you get five, six, seven wins, you're really grinding the value. I know it's, it's not as easy, uh, you know, easier said than done, but also I think limited is where it's at. <clears throat> if you want to play a lot of different forms of magic and grow your collection over time, so eventually you look back and you start building interesting decks, uh, like for singleton events or popper events. Just going to give you a lot more bang for your buck, especially converting that 5,000 gold into gems. It's pretty crucial. Field of the Dead. We're going to have to open a lot more packs and uh, draft a lot more things if we're going to try and catch that scape shift deck before it rotates out. But we will take it. It's a spicy card. And... Oh, snap. Got ourselves an Omnath. Between that and uh, drafting a couple Elementals decks, we probably have a decent B-roll Elementals teamer deck. Maybe we'll throw that together for our next stream. Appreciate it. If you are watching this to the end, thanks for sticking around. If you like the video, make sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please, please do. We're looking to make a thousand subscribers, hopefully before the end of the year. And if you have any comments, go ahead and leave them below about any of the content that you'd like to see, or maybe things that I screwed up and that I'm, I suck at. Tell me all about it down below and we'll see you in our next video.